Good evening all. Welcome back to NPTEL PMRF tutorials on introductory organic chemistry 2 by Professor Harina Chakrapani and Professor Niraja Deshaputre. Myself Anisha Suresh, PMRF TA for this course from IIT Bombay. Today we will be discussing week 7 assignments from previous year uh, which will be based on conjugate addition reaction, uh, reactions of uh, alkylation reactions of enolates and some named reactions uh, that is condensation reactions before going into the questions of this week uh, i will clear the doubt regarding uh, ring strain in previous class so coming to the ring stability for uh, fully saturated carbocyclic rings each carbon is sp3 hybridized so the ideal angle they should follow is 109.5 degree which is the tetrahedral angle but a planar ring the carbon atoms don't have the luxury of choosing their bond angles the internal angles depend only on the number of atoms in the ring so the internal angle depends only on the number of atoms in the ring so if the angle is differing from the ideal 109.5 degree tetrahedral angle, there will be some sort of uh, strain in the molecule. This is shown in the picture that is given below where the atoms are forced to be planar. The more strain the molecule, the more the bonds curve. In a strain free molecule, the bonds are straight. Here all the internal angles are 109.5 degree. Here the uh, bonds are forced to be uh, 109.5 degree and here we can see that many bonds are curved. In the smaller rings the bonds curve outwards. We can see in the smaller rings the bonds are curving outwards and in the larger rings like 7 membered and 8 membered ring the bonds are curving inwards. Here in this table they have given the internal angle of a planar ring and the difference between uh, internal angle and the ideal tetrahedral angle of 109.5 degree. This difference, the difference between 109.5 degree and the internal angle is the measure of strain per carbon atom. So this is the measure of strain that each atom is facing inside that ring. In case of a three-membered ring, the internal angle of the planar ring is 60 degree and the angle strain is 49.5 degree. Angle strain is the difference between 109.5 degree and the internal angle. When it comes to a four-membered ring, the angle is uh, 90 degree and the difference is uh, 109.5 degree minus 90 degree. It will be 19.5 degree. So here the uh, strain is getting reduced. When it comes to 5 membered ring, the internal angle in the planar ring is 108 degree. Here it is almost close to that of 109.5 degree. Only the difference or the strain feeling inside the ring is 1.5 degree. When it comes to 6 membered ring, the internal angle is 120 degree and the difference is minus 10.5 degree. The strain is increasing. But six-membered rings are capable of attaining the stable cyclohex uh, chair conformation, cyclohexane chair conformations. Because of that uh, ability to attain the chair conformation, the six-membered rings can uh, have stable conformations. So five-membered and six-membered rings are stabler compared to the other rings. We can see that coming to a uh, seven-membered ring, its uh, internal angle is 128.5 degree and the difference is minus 19 degree. So the strain is getting increased compared to that of a 5 membered ring. And when it comes to 8 membered ring, the angle is still becoming wider. It is 135 degree and the difference is minus 25.5 degree. So what we can conclude from this table is the ring strain is largest for 3 membered rings. As we can see here, the ring strain is highest for three-membered ring. It rapidly decreases through a four-membered ring. It uh, decreased drastically to 19.5 degree in case of four-membered ring. And it reaches a minimum value that is 1.5 degree to that of a five-membered ring. The planar five-membered ring is predicted to have the minimum level of ring strain. 
and the ring strain keeps on increasing although rest rapidly as the rings get larger after the minimum at 5. So the ring strain is getting increased. Although it is uh, the difference is shown in negative, it is getting increased. The strain is getting increased when the ring size is becoming larger than that of 5 membered. So last class we have discussed 5 membered and 6 membered rings are stabler than 8 membered rings and when there is a possibility to form 8 membered rings the formation of 5 and 6 membered rings won't when there is a chance to uh, when the uh, sorry uh, when there is a chance to form 5 or 6 membered rings the formation of 8 membered ring is not taking place it is less feasible that formation of 8 membered ring will be taking place when there is a possibility for formation of 5 or 6 membered rings. Is this clear for everyone? Now we will move to question number 1 of this assignment. So here which combination of carbonyl compounds give phenyl vinyl ketone by an aldol condensation reaction? So, uh, this is the structure of phenyl vinyl ketone. They have given the product that is formed in the reaction and they are asking for what is the starting materials that should be used for the aldol condensation reaction to give this as the major product that is phenyl vinyl ketone as the major product. What should be the starting materials or the combination of carbonyl compounds that should be used in the aldol condensation reaction. So, four different sets of carbonyl compounds they have given and out of this one will be the right option. So, we will go to the mechanism uh, of formation of phenyl vinyl ketone and see what are the carbonyl combination, uh, compounds combination that is used in its formation. So, coming to mechanism, we have acetophenone and acetophenone is having three alpha hydrogen atoms as we can see here. Then, in the presence of a base, the base can abstract one of the alpha hydrogen proton. Then the electron density will shift in this direction and the enolate will be forming. As we can see here, we will get this enolate. This enolate, uh, once the oxygen electron density is falling down, uh, this carbon carbon double bond will go and attack on this carbonyl center. And this electron density will be shifted in this fashion. Clear? Once this electron uh, oxygen electron density is falling down, the carbon-carbon double bond. Actually, uh, the negative charge, negative charge that is forming at this carbon center is attacking this carbonyl. And uh, we will get this aldol product after protonation here O minus will be formed it after protonation we will get this aldol product then in the presence of the base there is again two more alpha hydrogen the base can abstract the alpha hydrogen one of the alpha hydrogen it will form the enolate it will form the enolate. It will form this enolate. And it can undergo E1CB reaction. That is elimination of this hydroxyl. To give the alpha beta unsaturated compound. Uh, I will erase this. So this is the mechanism of E1CB. This oxygen lone pair will fall down then this carbon carbon double bond will shift in this uh, direction and this hydroxide will be removed and we will get this phenyl vinyl ketone as the major product so the starting materials used for formation of uh, phenyl vinyl ketone by aldol condensation reaction are one is acetophenone and the second carbonyl is formaldehyde I hope the mechanism is clear for everyone. Now coming to uh, other set of uh, carbonyl compounds that was given to us. One is benzaldehyde and one is ac acetaldehyde. So benzaldehyde is not having any enolizable proton. So uh, enolate will form from acetaldehyde. 
so acetaldehyde will form the enolate uh, and that enolate will go and attack on this um, aldehyde benzaldehyde and uh, upon condensation that is even cb dehydration it will give this product this alpha beta unsaturated compound when uh, here there is possibility for formation of self condensation product also but we are discussing only cross condensation products here when we have uh, acetophenone and uh, acetaldehyde there is two possibilities for formation of phenolate either from uh, acetaldehyde or from when acetophenone so once uh, if uh, enolate is forming from acetaldehyde it will lead to formation of this alpha beta unsaturated compound or if enolate is forming from this acetophenone it will lead to formation of this alpha beta unsaturated product now coming to the third set of options that was given fourth set of options that was given to us uh, it was benzaldehyde and formaldehyde in both of these cases there is no alpha hydrogen present so there is no possibility for any reaction to take place is this clear i hope this is clear for everyone you can work it out uh, and uh, write down the mechanisms uh, as we have solved here in the first example so you will be able to get these answers if you have any doubts regarding this you can feel free to stop me and ask at any time now coming back to our question which combination of carbonyl compounds give phenyl vinyl ketone by an aldol condensation reaction so the correct answer is acetophenone and formaldehyde option a i hope this is uh, clear for everyone now moving forward to question number 2 which ester will not give a good yield of the claisen condensation product with naoet that is sodium ethoxide in ethanol so they have given four options for claisen condensation reaction four options of esters for claisen condensation reaction out of which one of the uh, starting material will not give good yield of claisen condensation product so we can see what is the mechanism of claisen condensation reaction first before solving this question so coming to the mechanism the ester is having one alpha hydrogen so the ethoxide is a base it can abstract the alpha hydrogen electron density will shift in this fashion and it will lead this is the arrow pushing mechanism it will lead to formation of o minus so this is the enolate that will be formed now there are no other uh, starting materials in the reaction so this can undergo self condensation condensation this o minus will fall back and this carbon carbon double bond it can come and attack on this carbonyl this o minus this carbon carbon double bond will, carbon oxygen double bond will break and lead to formation of o minus this tetrahedral intermediate will be formed so once this tetrahedral intermediate collapses that is the electron density from oxygen falls down this ethoxide will be eliminated and we will get this product but we can see that here the equilibrium arrow is favoring the formation of uh, starting material and not the product so there is chance that even this product is formed it can go back and give the starting material so what is the driving force for this reaction here there is one more hydrogen present so the base can abstract that hydrogen and it will lead to formation of enolate here the base can abstract this hydrogen it will lead to formation of enolate it is a stable delocalized enolate that is it can undergo resonance it is delocalized over this two carbonyls so this enolate can be formed and uh, this enolate will direct the reaction in the forward direction that is towards the product and the formation of enolate this step is irreversible now when we work up this reaction with hcl that is an acid we will get this 
one three dicarbonyl species that is beta keto ester or three oxo ester. This is the mechanism for Claisen condensation reaction. And what is the hint for solving this question is that if the original ester has two substituents on the alpha carbon atom, that is C2 of the ester, the formation of stable enolate of the product is no longer possible as there are no hydrogen atoms left to remove. So, this, uh, if this is the ester, this is the starting material we are having, we will get this product according to whatever mechanism we followed here, we will get this product. But this reaction is in equilibrium and this is an unfavorable equilibrium. It is favoring the formation of starting material back and not the formation of product. Mm. So the whatever product that is formed, it can go back to the starting material. What was uh, forcing the reaction towards formation of product in this um, Claisen condensation was the formation of the stable delocalized enolate. However, in this case, when there are two substituents on the alpha carbon atom, there is no more proton for abstraction for forming this stable delocalized enolate. Because of that, this reaction will not go to completion. Still starting material will remain in the reaction mixture. Only less amount of product we will be getting. Is this clear? The ab absence of alpha hydrogens is the reason why formation of this stable delocalized enolate is not taking place here. And because of that, uh, the reaction will be still in equilibrium and this is an unfavorable equilibrium. It will give back the starting material. So, which ester will not give a good yield of Claisen condensation product with NaOET in, that is sodium ethoxide in ethanol. Here we have 3 alpha hydrogen. Here we have 2 alpha hydrogen. Here there is only 1 alpha hydrogen. And here we have 2 alpha hydrogen. So, in this case, after formation of the first condensation product, it cannot abstract the proton again to form the stable enolate. Stable delocalized enolate formation is not taking place in this case. And because of that, starting material will be still remaining or the product that is formed can go back to give the starting material again. And because of that reason, this uh, starting material or this reactant will not give good yield of Claisen condensation product. So this is the answer for question 2. We can move forward towards question 3. And question 3 is which is the main product of the following reaction. They have given a diester compound and treated with sodium ethoxide in ethanol and hydro, uh, doing hydrolysis. What is the major product that will form in the reaction? Four options are given. We have to find what is the major product that is formed in the reaction. So, coming to the mechanism of this reaction. This is similar to Claisen condensation reaction. However, the reaction is taking place in intramolecular fashion. Hence, this reaction is uh, called Dieckmann condensation reaction. So, here both the esters are identical. So, abstraction of alpha hydrogen from uh, either side will be giving similar product only. So, the ethoxide will abstract the alpha hydrogen and it will lead to formation of enolate by arrow pushing mechanism taking place in this fashion. Ethoxide will abstract hydrogen. This electron density will shift here. This carbon oxygen bond will break leading to formation of O-. We will get this enolate. Once the enolate is falling back, this oxygen electron density will come down leading to formation of carbon oxygen double bond. Then this carbon carbon double bond will break and it can go and attack on this ester carbonyl leading to formation of this tetrahedral intermediate. Once this tetrahedral intermediate is falling back, ethoxide will eliminate and we will get this product. However, this reaction is in equilibrium. <coughs> However, this reaction is in equilibrium. 
so once the ethoxide can once again the ethoxide can abstract this alpha hydrogen and it can lead to formation of this in enolate then it, uh, this step is an irreversible step and the reaction will move forward move in the forward direction is it clear similar to claisen condensation reaction all these steps are in equilibrium so it can give back the starting material so uh, there is alpha hydrogen present detoxide can abstract that alpha hydrogen it will lead to formation of this enolate and once when we do work up with hcl and water it will abstract proton from the system and we will get this as the major product with good yield is this clear i hope this is clear for everyone so out of this four options the main product formed in the following reaction this is dickman condensation reaction which is intramolecular claisen condensation reaction and as we have seen in the mechanism we discussed now this is the major product of this following reaction so the answer is this cyclopentanone derivative now coming to question number 4 identify the product of the following robinson annulation reaction so they have given these two starting materials and they have treated with koh ethanol and they are asking what is the major product that will be formed here four options are given three options are given and one is none of the above so we have to find what is the right product or the what is the major product that is formed in this reaction by robinson annulation so what is taking place in robinson annulation we will see the mechanism first these are the two starting materials here this proton will be more acidic for abstraction by the base as it is between two electron withdrawing carbonyl groups so this will be one second this will be the most acidic hydrogen it will lead to formation of enolate and it can uh, undergo conjugate addition that is 14 addition 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 it can undergo 14 addition leading to formation of this product this is the conjugate addition product now this is an enolizable group if enolate is forming in this carbon it will lead to formation of 1 2 3 4 5 6 six membered ring there is other possibility for formation of um, enolate uh, from this carbon Uh, when enolate is forming from this carbon then it will lead to formation of 1 2 3 4 membered ring formation of 6 membered ring is favored over formation of 4 membered ring so uh, enolate will form uh, from this carbon and um, it will undergo aldol condensation reaction to give this product so this robinson annulation reaction mainly take place in three steps the first step is conjugate addition so first enolate will be formed as uh, the most acidic hydrogen is present uh, on this molecule it will lead to formation of the enolate when the enolate is falling back this uh, oxygen electron density falls back this carbon carbon double bond can go and attack at this position 14 position this addition at 14 position is called conjugate addition or michael addition as well then electron density will shift in this direction and o minus will be formed then it can undergo tautomerism and we will get this conjugate addition product here tautomerism will take place tautomerism t a u t o m m e r i Yes, sir. Tautomerism. 
now we have this in hand and as we have discussed there is a possibility for formation of enolate from two of this carbon one will give six membered ring and one will give four membered ring formation of four membered ring is unfavored uh, when there is a chance for formation of six membered ring so in the presence of the base this enolate will form uh, it, it will fall down it can go and attack on this carbonyl and O minus will be generated. A 6 6 fuse system will form. Then uh, this O minus can undergo protonation and we will get this aldol product. Now, the third step is even CB dehydration reaction. So, in the presence of base, again there is alpha hydrogen. It will lead to formation of enolate. Here, there will be alpha hydrogen. The base can abstract this alpha hydrogen. It will lead to formation of the enolate. And once the enolate is falling back, this electron density will shift here and this OH- minus will be removed, giving this alpha-beta unsaturated compound. So these are the three major steps or stages of a Robinson annulation reaction, a conjugate addition, intramolecular aldol reaction and even CB dehydration. So, uh, we will get this alpha-beta unsaturated compound as the major product. So, this is the uh, product that is formed in our reaction. We will see. Is, is this option available here? Yes, the option is available here and it is option A. So, the correct answer is option A as we have discussed in the mechanism of Robinson annulation. If you are having any doubt regarding Robinson annulation reaction, you can feel free to ask me. Now, we will move forward towards question number 5. Coming to question number 5, what would be the starting materials used if the following molecule was made using Robinson annulation? So, this is the product that is formed by Robinson annulation reaction. And they wanted to know which of these uh, following set of starting materials will give this product. Now, uh, coming to the mechanism of formation of this product, we have this ketoester, and upon treating with base, it will form this enolate as uh, this hydrogen will be the most acidic hydrogen. Then this enolate, uh, enolate can go and attack on this vinyl ether, vinyl ether ketone uh, like this. This oxygen density, oxygen electron density will fall down. This carbon-carbon double bond will attack in 1-4 fashion here. That is Michael addition will take place. Then this electron density will shift here and O minus uh, carbon oxygen double bond will break and O minus will be generated. We will get this product, conjugate addition product. Then upon protonation, here the protonation will be taking place from base. BH plus will be formed. In the presence of base, BH plus will be formed and from that uh, proton will be abstracted. When this is falling back from BH plus, it will abstract the proton and we will get this product. This is not any acid source. It is conjugate acid of this base. Now what will happen? Base can abstract. Uh, now this is enolizable hydrogen. Base can abstract proton from this carbon. There is two possibility. Here also, here also. But when uh, enolate is formed in this carbon, it, it will lead to formation of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 membered ring upon attack at this carbonyl. And when uh, enolate is formed on this carbon, it will lead to formation of 1, 2, 3, 4 membered ring. So, formation of uh, 6 membered ring is favored over formation of 4 membered ring. So, we will get this product as the major product. Now, what will happen is that base. Uh, uh, formation of six membered ring is favored. So base will abstract proton and we will get this enolate. Uh, once this enolate falls back, 
this carbon carbon double bond can go and attack on this carbonyl and we will get this six six membered fused ring system then uh, this uh, will abstract uh, this will undergo protonation and we will get this aldol product and it can undergo even cb dehydration to get this alpha beta unsaturated compound that was given in our question now we will see what is the uh, products that will be formed what will be the uh, products that will be formed from the other starting materials that was given in the question so if this diketone is reacting with this vinyl ethyl ketone it will lead to formation of this product you can work it out in a similar way we have solved the previous uh, example or the correct set of options so when there is this substituted cyclohexanone in presence of vinyl ethyl ketone it will lead to formation of this product and when there is this um, starting material which is which will undergo intramolecular uh, robinson annulation reaction it will lead to formation of this product intramolecular reaction in the presence of base it will lead to formation of this product so i uh, in the next lecture i will uh, discuss the shortcut mechanism for identifying the starting materials or the products from a robinson annulation reaction so here uh, we uh, we got the right set of starting materials uh, giving this product by robinson annulation reaction and that was option d where this uh, keto ester and this vinyl ethyl ketone uh, will undergo robinson annulation and it will give this as the major product so the correct answer is this keto ester and vinyl ethyl ketone now coming to question number 6 the major product formed in the following transformation is and they have given the substituted cyclohexenone in presence of memgcl that is methyl grignard and copper chloride it will form some in, uh, intermediate and it upon treatment with allyl chloride it will give one major product what is that major product so we can see what is the mechanism that is taking place here coming to the mechanism here we have the substituted cyclohexenone it upon treatment with mid, uh, methyl magnesium chloride that is methyl grignard and copper chloride it will undergo transmetallation reaction trans met lation it will undergo transmetallation reaction and it will form methyl copper species so we know that grignard is a hard nucleophile hard nucleophiles are those which are having smaller size and which uh, have greater electron density accumulated on them so uh, uh, grignard is hard nucleophile whereas the uh, methyl copper that will be formed it is a soft it is a soft nucleophile uh, uh, soft nucleophiles have bigger size uh, and uh, th there the electron density will be delocalized so hard nucleophiles will attack at hard centers and soft nucleophiles will attack at soft centers so this one two position or this carbonyl position it is hard and this position this is soft so since methyl copper is forming this methyl me minus will attack at this position that is one four position this methyl uh, copper species will undergo michael addition reaction and it will lead to formation of this enolate this enolate will be formed once we have this enolate in hand when it is falling back then this carbon carbon double bond will go and attack on this allyl chloride as we can see here let me drop whatever i have drawn so once the enolate is falling back 
carbon carbon double bond will go and attack at this allylic position this carbon carbon double bond will shift and the chloride will be kicked out so we will get this as the major product here phenyl is bulky compared to that of the methyl group so allyl group is coming uh, opposite to that of the phenyl group or uh, you can uh, understand it clearly when you draw the chair conformation for cyclohexanone so is the mechanism clear for everyone so the correct product that is formed in the following transformation when we treat this cyclohexanone with methyl magnesium chloride and copper chloride in presence of allyl chloride it uh, and uh, no no and then if we treat with allyl chloride first it will undergo 1,4 addition of uh, methyl after forming uh, methyl copper species and then it will generate an enolate and uh, the quenching of the enolate will take place with this allyl chloride giving alpha allylation product this is the right option i hope this is clear for everyone if you have any doubts you can feel free to ask now coming to question number 7 identify the intermediate x and the final product y in the given reaction sequence so we have a cyclohexenone it was treated with lda at minus 78 degrees celsius and then with a uh, methyl iodide and finally hydrolysis with water it will give an intermediate x and it was treated with thiophenol in presence of triethylamine it will give y so they have given four set of options out of which one will be the right option. So we will go through the mechanism and identify what is X and what is Y according to the reagents and conditions that are given. Now coming to uh, mechanism, we have the cyclohexenone. It when treated with LDA, here there is proton at this position and there is proton at this position. So LDA will abstract the proton from this position because abstracting proton from this position will lead to formation of aline species and here the bond angle of this uh, cyclic compound is not favoring the formation of aline. So LDA will abstract proton from this carbon. It will lead to formation of a lithium enolate like this so a lithium enolate will be formed and that lithium enolate when it falls down it can go and abstract this methyl group from methyl iodide and the iodine will be removed and we will get this product here the oxygen is having positive charge as it is attached with lithium upon doing hydrolysis we will get this substituted cyclohexenone and this is the intermediate X. Now we have phenyl thiophenol and triethylamine added to the reaction mixture. In uh, presence of this uh, thiophenol and triethylamine, it will lead to formation of phenyl thiolate. That phenyl thiolate is a soft nucleophile. Sulfur is uh, coming in uh, lower groups. So it is having bigger size. So phenyl uh, S- minus will be bigger anion. The charge will be delocalized. And because of that, it will undergo 1,4 addition. 1,4 sender is soft sender. 1,2 sender is hard sender. Since phenyl S- minus is a soft nucleophile, it will undergo 1,4 addition and we will get this product. Then uh, this can fall back. It can abstract a proton from uh, this base. Whatever uh, proton that is attached to the base, it will be abstracted and we will get the compound Y. So this is compound X. And this is compound Y. Compound X is formed by formation of enolate uh, by LDA on this carbon. And uh, then abstraction of methyl uh, group from methyl iodide. We will get compound X. And compound Y is formed when the soft nucleophile 
that is phenyl thiolate is going and attacking on this uh, one four position and uh, then uh, protonation it will give compound y i hope this is clear for everyone uh, so the correct set of options option uh, for x and y are option d where here methylation is taking place and phenyl thiol is attacking at the 1,4 position. So the correct answer is this one. Now coming to question number 8. Which of the following is the product of the given reaction sequence? This is the starting material they have given and we have, they, they are treating it with acid. So it is undergoing uh, a reaction similar to that of Robinson annulation. Uh, Robinson annulation take place in basic condition. Here the reaction is proceeding in acidic condition. So we will see the mechanism of the reaction. So coming to the mechanism. This is the starting material we are having. We uh, have treated it with uh, uh, acid uh, like it is in acidic condition. So instead of formation of enolate, it will lead to formation of enol. This is enol. So there is possibility for formation of enol from this carbon and from this carbon. Here this carbon will lead to formation of six membered uh, cycle and this carbon will lead to formation of four membered cycle. So formation of six membered ring is favored over formation of four membered ring. So we will uh, get this enol which will lead to formation of six membered ring as the major one. So we have this enol in hand. Then it will, once the oxygen is, uh, for, uh, electron density from oxygen is falling back, this carbon-carbon double bond will go and attack on this carbonyl carbon and the carbon-oxygen double bond will break and we will get O-. minus. Here uh, it will immediately get proton as the system is acidic and we will get this aldol product. Then again, this can undergo formation of enol that is ketoenol tautomerism and this hydroxyl group will get protonated. So once this enol is falling back, this hydroxide will be removed like this. One second. Once the enol is falling back, this water molecule will be removed and we will get alpha beta unsaturated compound like this. Is the mechanism clear? This is also similar to that of um, Robinson annulation mechanism. But the only difference is that instead of formation of enolate, here enol is forming as the reaction is proceeding in acidic condition. So which of the following is the product of the given reaction sequence? So this is the correct answer as we have seen from the mechanism. So the correct option is option A. This one. Is this clear for everyone? If you have any doubts, you can feel free to ask. Now we will move to question number 9. When aldehyde slacking, alpha hydrogen is treated with a concentrated solution of a base, can is arrow reaction take place? What is the plausible mechanism? Uh, sorry, the plausible mechanism for the reaction is given below. So they have given the mechanism for canisaro reaction here, and we have discussed the mechanism for canisaro reaction in detail in the previous lecture. So we have an aldehyde which is lacking alpha hydrogen. Then uh, in the presence of uh, OH minus, which is a strong base, it will undergo uh, one two addition and lead to formation of this tetrahedral intermediate. Once this oxygen is falling back, this hydride will go and attack on another molecule of aldehyde and it will lead to formation of, here this oxygen is falling down. So carboxylic acid and this alkoxide will be forming. Then it will undergo this alkoxide will uh, abstract the proton from this carboxylic acid and we will get carboxylate and alcohol. 
This is a disproportionation reaction, the mechanism we have discussed in detail in the previous lecture. So here they have given what is the rate law deri derived from the above mechanism. So we have to write the rate law for the given reaction. So for writing the rate law, we should consider the rate determining step. The slowest step of the reaction is the rate determining step of the reaction. So this is the slowest step. So this is the rate determining step. And we will see how to write the rate law. Rate law show how the rate of a chemical reaction depends on the reactant concentration. For the reaction such as a molecule of A give product, the rate law generally has the form rate equal to K into where K is the rate constant. This is a concentration of A to the power N where K is proportionality constant called a rate constant and N is order of the reaction with respect to A. So this N can be equal to this uh, A or N can be different. This uh, N is not uh, related to reaction stoichiometry. It, can, it must be determined by experiment. So in our uh, question, we will consider this N equal to A. So uh, discussing another example for a reaction given by A, A plus B, B gives C, C plus D, D where A, B, C and D are stoichiometric coefficients. Small a, small b, small c and small d are stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants or product. So the rate equation can be written like rate is proportional to concentration of A to the power X and concentration of B to the power Y. When we uh, remove this proportionality sign, and it can be written rate equal to K where K is a constant, proportionality constant into concentration of A to the power X and concentration of B to the power Y. Here A and B denote the concentrations of reactants A and B. Here see this symbol denotes concentration. Here X and Y denote partial reaction orders for reactants. It can be or may not be equal to stoichiometric coefficients A and B. In our question, we will be considering it is equal to stoichiometric coefficient. The proportionality constant K is the rate constant of the reaction. So this is what we have to keep in mind while uh, writing the rate law. So now coming back to our question, we know that this is the slowest step. So uh, the reactants that are involved are this aldehyde and this intermediate. So intermediate we cannot involve in uh, rate low. So for that we will consider what are the starting materials from which the intermediate is derived. So while writing the rate low, these three starting materials we should consider. So we know rate low equal to R equal to a constant will be there. Then these two aldehydes are same. So concentration of these two aldehydes uh, we will write to the power 2. Since there are 2, we are considering a e that is um, n uh, what we have seen in the uh, rate law uh, when we discussed is equal to a so uh, the concentration of aldehydes we will write to the power 2 and then concentration of oh minus only one mole of oh minus is there so uh, oh minus to the power 1 so rate law for this equation is R equal to K into concentration of aldehyde to the power 2 into concentration of OH minus. Is that av uh, available here? Yes. Option C is the right answer. If you have any doubt regarding this question, you can feel free to ask or you can um, feel free to uh, uh, ask your doubts in the comments of my YouTube channel. Now coming to question number 10. The major product X formed in the following reaction is. Here they have given a substituted cyclohexanone. It is treated with LDA at minus 78 degrees Celsius and then with substituted allyl bromide. And we will get a product X. We have to identify what is X. Now, uh, coming to the mechanism of this reaction, we have the substituted cyclohexanone. Here, there is proton at this carbon and at this carbon. But uh, here, because of the medial group 
abstraction of proton from this carbon by LDA will be less feasible because LDA is a bulky base. Lithium diisopropyl amine here N minus and Li plus this is LDA. So abstraction of proton from this carbon will be difficult because of the steric hindrance uh, that this methyl group will uh, provide. So LDA will abstract proton from this carbon and it will lead to formation of this lithium enolate. Once we have this lithium enolate in hand, uh, this electron density from oxygen will fall down. It can attack on this uh, allylic position of the substituted allyl bromide. Then this carbon-carbon bond will shift and the bromide will get removed and we will get this product. So this is the major product that is formed in the um, reaction that is given to us. So out of this four options, the right option will be option B. So here we should consider LDA is a bulky base. So it will not abstract proton from a proton that is adjacent to the medial group. And uh, we will get kinetic uh, lithium enolate in this reaction. Then the uh, enolate is quenched by using this allyl bromide, substituted allyl bromide. And we will get this as the major product. Is this clear for everyone? I hope all the questions are clear for everyone. Today we will wind up the session. Uh, we can meet on next uh, Tuesday at 6 to 7 p.m. Where we will be discussing week 8 assignment questions of previous year. And that will be the last class I will be taking for all of you. Thank you for uh, attending this session. Thank you all.